Harry Fire Chaplain Walt Saxton. He's for on your phone for our invocation. Go ahead. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come together as a council to meet and discuss those cities, situations, problems, and the way things need to be done. Give us the wisdom, Lord, that we need to take care of these. Thank you, Lord, for helping us through this COVID crisis and just bless everyone here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Walt. You're welcome. Your wife, we hope she heals. Bye-bye. Well, couldn't be here because his wife had shoulder surgery, and so they've had to quarantine for a month before and two months after while she heals. So that was nice of him to do that. We'll wait just a few more minutes before we start the meeting to see if Terry... Um, Get all the meeting to order at 7 p.m. I have to follow my sheet that um, Devin gave me. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In our roll call, do I do that, Devin? Do I call them? Well, you should do that. You can see. Craig Elliott? Here. Andy Galbavi? Here. Adam Grass? Here. Larry Lambert? Here. Bob Porter? Here. Terry Wood? Mayor Sue Hammond? Here. All is accounted for except Council Member Terry Wood. We are going to hear from Joanne, um, our treasurer, later on, but we're going to do that by Zoom also. Is that right still? She didn't yes, change that is mind. correct. Okay. Kyle helped get her set up. So we're looking for approval of the agenda. Moved by Larry and seconded by Bob. And Bob. <laughs> okay. That the agenda be adopted as printed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Agenda is approved. And then reading and approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. <coughs> I move that we suspend the rules, waive the reading, and approve the minutes for the November 19, 2020 range of meeting. Second. So that's been moved by Craig and seconded by Adam that we suspend the rules, waive the reading, and approve the minutes from the November 19, 2020 regular meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? Okay. So moving right along. Pre approved reports and presentations. We have I don't any know those? of any tonight. Okay, there are none. Do we have any public who would like to make a comment? Terry, I think you're our only public. Okay, so I guess I would just say as Vice President of the Perry Historical Society, I just want to say to the council, you cannot imagine how grateful we are for the assistance that we are now getting. and. People come to us constantly telling us how beautiful the house looks, how happy they are, you know, that we're restoring it, and and they, they take great pride in it and, and the way it's looking and what's being done to preserve it. So I just want to say on behalf of the Historical Society, thank you, thank you, thank you. So appreciated. And really, I'd like to say thank you, Historical Society, for all the work you're doing there. Because it's not just the building. It's not just the house and the exterior. It's the living history that's inside mm -hmm. that is so important. So it'll be great when we can all get back in there. Yes, yeah. it will be. Yeah. 
Yeah, we have a lot of work to do yet, but we're on our way. Great, that's wonderful. Good yep. That's good news. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Any other comments from the public? I don't think we have any other. Communications, Devin? I do not have any tonight. Okay. And do we have um, any department head reports tonight? John? A uh, quick one. Yeah. So, um, we pretty much wrapped up leaf and brush collection for the season. Okay. Uh, we had an excellent fall to get everything done. Um, you know, we will still pick up uh, paper yard waste bags, you know, weather permitting if people get stuff out late. Uh, and then Christmas trees in January, just like the uh, new policy says. Okay. Um, I think I may have mentioned it, the sewer relining down William Street from out here at the sledding hill towards uh, Bath Road, that was completed uh, I think the first week of November. Um, we got quite a few houses, new, new builds, uh, reconstruction type stuff going on. Uh, they've cleared two more lots out in country estates set up, so we're, we're busy making connections and inspections and stuff like that. So um, we did get to some of the uh, street pavement crack ceiling you can see in various areas. Um, hopefully it works out well. <clears throat> so the other thing is back when COVID started, uh, we, we were mandated to suspend water shutoffs from the governor's executive that has expired, from my understanding. Um, you know, in some of my conversations, I did communicate some with Devin. Um, most water supplies were waiting until the end of the year to make a decision. What they wanted to do, either start back up or, um, you know, and I'm not making any recommendations. I'm going to leave it to. Uh, you guys to decide um, but the situation that we're in uh, as of the first of December we have 27 delinquents with an average of five hundred and twenty three dollars in uh, delinquency each yes well that's the average okay so John, is that, uh, you have that breakdown of residential versus businesses? Or is there? I know there's a, there's a few businesses in there. Okay. I don't, I, I lumped them all together. Okay. I don't have, you know, I just have had a, a list generated. Shirley helped me make the list with who was, and you know, typically in a normal, in normal times, We'll get to the end where we hang tags and we might have one or two that, that I have to turn off. Maybe not monthly, but you know, sometimes we'll go for a while. Uh, these are getting quite large, these bills. Uh, so it, inevitably they're gonna go on the taxes. And I, I can't answer whether they're rentals, who, you know, and any situations. I, I don't know the personal situations. I'm just reporting. This is where we're at right now. Do you, I know there's a, a program where people can help pay for people's water. We have the gift of water. There we go, gift of water. And that is something we have on our website um, for people to do. And um, there are a few people that utilize that. So yes, that is the, an opportunity for the public to help some of these people if they would like. And they can do it knowingly or they can do it anonymously to help some of these people out. What do you usually do once, if you didn't have this mandate to not shut them off, what's your, what's your protocol? Do you issue a letter, put a yep. thing on the door? They get, they get uh, the initial tags and then they get the final shutoff tag um, and then when we shut it off, that incurs another expense to them because we end up having to turn it back on. Some of them pay in full. We, we, if they can't pay in full, you know, 
make some payments arrangements and start paying it down but by the time it gets there the next month's bills rolling out and uh, I, I want to say that we start at 150 150 is when we actually start calling and stating that if you don't right. make a payment or um, pay your balance, you are going to see a, an actual door tag notice is, is right. the process. Um, but we are very reasonable if they're, if they're making payments that is getting them ahead more than behind. And as long as they don't break that promise, um, the city has worked with people but in this situation we're finding that they know that they don't have to and there's nothing being done even with our efforts because um, I've been asking the girls to kind of reach out and explain to that you need to make some effort and so now we're with John John's just uncomfortable with the mandates and everything that's going he doesn't want to make that decision whether to be aggressive or not on, right. on how to pursue this. Does the individual resident who's behind in their bill, do they have to ask for help from that gift of water fund or is it not a fund? Is it just It is the, not a fund. Okay. It is an opportunity for anybody in this community to donate money to, again, sometimes they'll do it anonymously and they just want to do it. They'll, they'll say, City Hall girls, you you figure out who's in need of this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're specific. Sometimes they put their name to it and say, okay. I want to be known I did this. Sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just, you know, a, a grandma helping a granddaughter out sure. just bought a new house and they'll do it as a, as a gift. Okay. But it is nothing connected to the city per se as, as a slush fund. As soon as we receive it, it's being processed to the immediate okay bill in front of it. There are no funds sitting available right now. Okay. Okay, well I guess we'll talk about that and let you know. Kai? Or excuse me. Please Chief Fox. Thank you, Mayor Hammond. You <laughs> Uh, I have a brief report, uh, and it's really more of a thank you to the state police and to the Durand Police Department. They assisted us in a pursuit uh, this past weekend. Covered 16 miles. Uh, it sounds more dramatic saying uh, pursuit, but it really was uh, pretty much at the post of speeds, uh, speed level limits. But uh, that being said, it did cover 16 miles, ended up out on the highway. Uh, driver ended up bailing out and running, and uh, he actually uh, complied with uh, some very strong verbal commands shortly after he got out of the car, and uh, without an incident, was arrested and taken to jail. And uh, Durand and the state police were there to help Officer Collier, who did a fantastic job himself. So, just want to say thank you to them. And uh, just a reminder that uh, we are still uh, finding people parking overnight. Uh, on the side street, or uh, yeah, the city streets, the side streets, and so we just want to make sure that uh, they understand that between six, 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. they cannot be on the side streets parked. Um, we get to snow flying and snow being removed, they're going to get towed, and then they get to call us after 8 o'clock and figure out where the car went. But uh, right now it's just uh, a ticket, and hopefully they understand the purpose of it and they can with it after they get the first one. Uh, also, that being said, with the snow and ice coming, we want to make sure that everyone's compliant in removing the snow and ice from their sidewalks. And the rule of thumb is 24 hours after the last snowfall, all the snow and ice need to be removed. Uh, we're pretty good about putting notices out and giving reminders, especially after the first couple of snows, but we definitely need compliance for all the foot traffic that we see, especially on Main Street. So um, we just want everybody to cooperate and get along. And the last thing we want to do is start writing tickets for nonsense like that. But if we have to, we will. Other than that, I don't have anything. So While you're any? still standing there, yes. I, I'm just going to let everybody know, please, 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 go the posted speed limit on Main Street. 
every place else too, but especially on Main Street, because one of my goals is to enforce the speed limit on Main Street. Um, people just need to go the speed limit, and I've talked to Kyle about it, and he and the officers are enforcing that and had six traffic stops yesterday. Yep. Since we spoke about it, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yes. So please be aware and drive the speed limit or less. Any questions? Thank you. I think that's all because Joanne's coming in later, right? Is that? She still might have the report. You might want to at least ask her. Is she there? Um, I'm asking her to unmute right now. All right. Well, I, I took mine off. Can you ask her? Yeah, I'm, I'm working on Alan. Grant, do you have a report? Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, what I have for you is I have the first quarter budget comparison, which is July, August, and September. Um, I have no recommendations. The changes that were made for the um, McQueen House are included in this budget, and um, everything is going along fine because it's a slow start. I'm not making any recommendations yet. Um, there is one, um, one notice that I would like you to be aware of. In the budget, I put in two connections for the water and sewer department because just to put something in the budget, but I didn't want to overstate what we were going to receive because you just, we never know. And um, I believe to date there has actually been seven connections. So water and sewer is looking very good. So if anybody has any questions, like I said, I'm not making any um, recommendations or budget amendments at this time. Nobody any questions for Joanne? Hopefully everyone's got a printed copy of this. I believe everybody does, Joanne. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. I knew Devin would take care of that. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Do you have anything else to report that's been going on with Treasury Department or on Department Head Report? Um, no, not at this time. We're working with the auditors. Devin and the girls have picked up the slack and are getting the information to the auditors, and we should have something from them before year end, which is the deadline. So it looks like they're on track for doing what they're supposed to. And that's, that's about it. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Glad I could be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's all of our department head reports. Am I mi missing anybody? No? Okay. So we can move on to committee reports. Do we have any of those? No? Presentation and approval of the bills. I move that we approve the bills as presented and the payment be authorized. Second. Larry, is that you? Yep. It's hard to tell with masks, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was moved by Adam, seconded by Larry, that we approve the bills as presented and payment be authorized. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? So that passes, and now we're on to old business, and I don't think we have any 
that came forward. Is anybody aware of any? Right. New business. The first on the agenda is the first quarter budget comparison. And that, I think, Joanne just pretty much covered, didn't she? Correct. Yeah, so that was what Joe gave us. Um, so we just need to accept that first quarter budget if everybody's in favor of that. So if someone would make that motion. I move that we accept the first quarter budget comparison as presented by the treasurer. Second. Okay, so moved by Craig and seconded by Adam that we accept that first quarter budget as presented by the treasurer. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Okay, so moving right on to um, bringing the uh, chief back up for the discussion or at least hearing a little bit more about the possible approval of the taser upgrade. Yes, I uh, mentioned a couple meetings ago about uh, the need for a new taser and uh, just as a reminder we're working with a 15 year old piece of technology. Uh, needless to say the uh, the new tasers are much more efficient in, as far as uh, immobilizing someone who isn't compliant. Uh, the current taser, we may have replaced it under warranty, but the warranty is only five years old, so at the very least, this taser we've had in our possession for 10 years, but it's the same technology and the same model that we got 15 years ago. So they have made some vast improvements and they're much more effective. And uh, unfortunately, the price hasn't really gone down, hardly at all. But uh, that being said, uh, I talked with Sue this morning and uh, actually had in the budget uh, a canine line item for fundraising of $1,500. And uh, going to ask for that. Uh, that was not put in the budget this year, but that was all money that was raised for our canine units back how long ago? 14 years ago probably, something like that. Anyway, um, since we don't have a canine unit anymore and uh, not looking to uh, start that program back up, I would uh, like to put that back in as a budget amendment in the second quarter this first quarter. So we'll get to that uh, in a few months and put that back in. I was anticipating of this, uh, doing this purchase around the end of February. And we all know what happened uh, a couple weeks into March and uh, fell off my radar and uh, I neglected to put that $1,503 specifically back into my budget line item for uh, July 1st budget approval. So that being said, uh, I'd like to take that money and then also we have drug forfeiture, um, several thousand dollars in drug forfeiture. Uh, I believe Joanne and I worked out we were gonna put $1,500 in a workable budget line item for this year. And I'd like to take money from that also. Anything that we're over and above beyond those two line items, I can take out of my current budget without any problem. And so essentially it's all budgeted money. It's all been there. And uh, so don't let the price tag you know, scare you. I was anticipating something along these lines. Uh, they actually give you the option to, because of the unit itself having a five-year warranty, they give you the option to lease for five years and make payments. I don't like that. That's not my mentality. I'd just soon pay for it up front since we have the money. So uh, that would be my uh, preference if we could do that. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any specific questions in the quote that you have in front of you. Uh, I believe I have a basic understanding of all of this, but uh, if you need anything answered, I'd be happy to answer those questions. I have a, a hopefully easy question for you, Chief. Okay. Um, I'm assuming these cartridges, those are the ones that actually get projectile and then yes. you just, as you use them, up, you get new ones? Yes. 
how long do you think 14 would last? I'm just curious. Well, the, the thing of it is, um, and that's a great question, the 14 actually, a bulk of those are for our training. So with you know, a, a new unit, on top of that, there's annual training that takes place. So uh, these actually won't be necessarily used in the field. These will be used probably up here uh, in our target that we just practice uh, shooting it. Uh, Taser requires that for each officer annually. Okay. And so the, of those 14, we're probably going to shoot most of those, and then we'll have a handful on hand for actual use. And for the use in the field. Yep, okay. exactly. But as far as shelf life or any kind of uh, life, um, they're good as long as we don't use them. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for the chief? I would probably, I'm sorry, go ahead. I probably will be buying, I see there are, uh, there's a left-handed holster and a right-handed holster. Uh, they make other models. Um, I wanted to see what these were, so I went ahead and got a left and a right. But my goal is to have each officer have their own holster so they don't have to swap the holster out, out of, off the duty belt for each shift. Between day shift and night shift, they would have to then transition. So once we get the taser or the holsters in front of us and we have a ballpark idea of what we like and what we don't like, um, we may experiment with some and return what we don't like. But at this point, I just wanted to start with the, the two that they recommend from taser, and then we can expand out and look for other ones that fit each individual officer with their needs. So, but I can take that out of my individual budget. It doesn't have to come out of this purchase line item. I'm going to be accepting the proposal from Axon Enterprises Inc. for the amount not to exceed $3,444 to upgrade taser guns and authorize Chief of Police to sign quote acceptance. Second. Who seconded? I'm sorry. Bob? Okay. So that has been moved and seconded that we accept this proposal from Axon Enterprise Inc. for an amount not to exceed $3,444 to upgrade taser guns and authorize chief of police to sign, quote, acceptance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for all you do. This next item, the possible $25 bonus for non-eligible longevity employees. I think you talked about this a little bit at the last meeting, if I remember right. But, so yeah. Good. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that, or are we just ready to move ahead? No questions, no comments. Is anybody interested in making the motion that's before you? I move that we approve a, bo a bonus for all those on city payroll that are not eligible for longevity bonuses except council and mayor in an amount not to exceed $25. Second. Okay. Moved by Craig, seconded by Larry, that the bonus be approved for those on the city payroll that are not eligible for the longevity bonus except council <coughs> and mayor in an amount not to exceed $25 each. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The next, the next one came about uh, possible resolution adoption of local declaration of state of emergency. As you know, we have a state of emergency in place, a declaration in place, but it expires the end of this month. And in order to legally continue to have perhaps council members who can't attend the meeting or like tonight we had you know somebody who wasn't able to be here but they could do that by zoom in order to do that legally we have to be under a state of emergency and so Devin got hold of um, attorney Bridges and asked about that and um, he has advised us to um, prepare a resolution and that is what's in front of you if you would all like to make sure you read that um, but this would just simply allow us to continue to use zoom in our meetings if we need to 
May I add one thing to you? Absolutely. The current way we are doing the remote um, meetings is just been like it has been since COVID started, and which I mean, you you could be on there. There there's nothing else being asked for. Um, if you'll note in Mr. Bridges, um, he is telling after December 31st, and with this resolution in front of you, this will put this in place all through 2021, unless council rescinds it. But there's an extra process according to the Open Meetings Act that he is telling. So if you so choose that you are going to stay at home or wherever you may be, and attend the meeting, you will be asked to, um, in the actual roll call, to acknowledge um, the city and the county and the date, just identifying that you are not physically here, and it has to be documented and put in the minutes. So I've made just a little chart going forward, so it, it's available and it will be documented real easy, real quick, and it should go real smooth through the actual roll call in the beginning of the meeting. The other thing that kind of goes along with that is, <clears throat> excuse me, if we do have any council member who is attending remotely, then any action that we take in the way of a vote, it has to be a roll call vote. So that's just another little different thing if we do have a council member who is attending remotely. So looking for a um, motion to adopt the resolution. I move that we accept and adopt the local declaration of state of emergency resolution which allows the city of Perry public body in whole or in part to continue having remote meetings through December 21st, 2021. Second. Mindy. Thank you, thank you, Larry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So that's great. We're moving on. The uh, next item under new business is concerning the possible approval to purchase a computer and software for that computer for the mayor's office. <laughs> Devin has uh, checked into that, and um, if you have any questions, I would uh, give those to her. Although, please, I really, really want one in here. <laughs> usually, when I put a computer in front of you, we already have it established. We're usually upgrading because it's outdated and it's having issues. So, this package in front of you um, for our veteran elected. It also includes a monitor because we don't have, we, we want the whole set for her. I move that we authorize payment to IT right for a six core Intel quad core i5 uh, 10 400 computer monitor and Microsoft Office Home and Business software for an amount will not exceed $1,219. This includes the transfer of all existing data from the old system to the new. Okay. Larry, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Okay. All those in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Are opposed? Okay, that passes. Now we're on to talking about the Christmas dinner party, better known as employee appreciation dinner. <laughs> as you all know, they had planned to have a dinner showing appreciation for the city employees December 11th, which might still be able to happen, but we don't know. It was going to be at Brookshire, so that's an inside thing. It's too cold to eat outside. <laughs> so I guess we just need to talk about what to do because we don't have another meeting until after that date. Um, so we just need to be able to give some direction if the restrictions are still in place and the restaurant can't open what do we do I mean options certainly are to postpone it and hold it after restrictions are lifted um, or just 
cancel it for this year and hope for bigger and better next year at Christmas time. Um, but what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that you're going to, I mean, I, I don't anticipate seeing it. I mean, you don't know until it happens, but it sounds like after today's uh, discussion with uh, Governor Whitmer and others that it, it's definitely on the table to extend this thing. Uh, I don't see, you know, part of the point in taking it outside here was so the employees didn't have to do anything, and so it's certainly something we want to keep in place. Um, you know, we really don't have, I don't think we have any option to, other than to postpone unless they lift the restrictions. I don't see what else you would do. Um, that, that's, that's my, I mean, I, I don't see any other option. I mean, that's just my two cents. I agree. I don't think we have, it'd be terrible to have a host party and someone get sick or a bunch of them get sick. Mm -hmm. Personally, I've already given my regrets not to go because of COVID. But again, I'm also new, so I understand the importance of have uh, an appreciation dinner. So part of me says leave it up to the, the staff, but also I think we should say no, personally. I think my vote would say we should postpone it or cancel it for the year. My thoughts would be much like Adam and Bob, but uh, it would be that we postpone it and maybe hold it at the end of the first quarter or when we have a, a more conducive environment rather than just call it canceled. Okay. And looking at the percent positive you know, COVID numbers, I I can't imagine that we're not going to see an extension past the eighth in some form or other. So it's unlikely that we, the restaurant would have the ability to be open on the 11th. And yeah, I think there's a lot of concern around that as they let's look at postponing it till the maybe end of the first quarter of 2021. Everybody in agreement with that? Anybody want to make that, do we need to make that into a motion or do, are we just making that a suggestion or what are you looking for here, Doug? Uh, they can make it a formal motion. Um, you can all agree, and I can put that in the minutes that it's a postponement. Um, it, it is, I mean, they they made a motion to create it. I guess it wouldn't hurt for them to make a motion to postpone until further notice. I mean, because we really don't even have a date. If if that is your decision to postpone it, you just just it just it doesn't have to be complicated. You know, just something simple. I I would imagine. Um, I do want to add that Shirley has done the work immediately. I um, asked her to inquire about the situation. They're, they were, Brookshire was great. They're like, we get it. Um, you know, uh, we were obligated. We're not tied at all. You know, so there's no deposit. There's no, and, and they, they don't assume they're going to open either. But they said, if we open it up on the 8th, and your party's on the 11th, then everything's clear. We also are there to support you. So anyways, um, I just want to add that, you know, Shirley did her part to look into it, and they were very nice to us, and just, they're willing to go with the flow. It, it is what it is right now. They understand. Somebody want to make a motion in, in that effect? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, I'll move that we uh, postpone the employee appreciation dinner until further notice uh, due to COVID restrictions. Second. Okay. All those in favor of postponing the appreciation dinner? Aye. 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 Opposed? So we'll postpone for now, but let's um, mentally keep this on the agenda for further discussion as we're able to get them in somewhere so that we can do that. All righty. Did they vote on that one? Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. The next um, item for discussion is regarding 
the number of council meetings um, that we have. And um, we're supposed to, by rules, the rules of procedure, is that that? Charter. Charter. We're supposed to stay tonight that what the dates will be that we'll be meeting. And you have been for some time now meeting twice a month. It was expressed to me prior to my becoming mayor that um, sometimes it was difficult to get a quorum. Um, now I haven't seen that in the brief time that I've started coming to the meetings. But if that's the case, I said, why do you meet twice a month? And the answer was, because we always have. I said, why? Other municipalities don't meet twice a month. They meet once. So I asked Devin and I talked to John and Kyle and asked, would it mess things up, you know, with you guys if we only met once a month? And there would be some hoops to jump through to make sure that bills were getting paid and things were getting done in a timely manner, but they thought it was workable, but it's fine with me either way. I'm, I'm not jumping in here in my first meeting and saying, okay, do it my way. It doesn't matter to me. I live, only live three blocks away. <laughs> um, but what are your thoughts on that? Are you interested in doing that at all, or do you like it the way it is? Discussion. Open for discussion. I knew being one of the, the new people would be that uh, given some of the things I'd like to see us do into the new calendar year and things that we at least stick with the you know, twice a month for you know, at least the first quarter of next year. Okay. And then if we find out that we have an attendance problem, I wouldn't go to once a month simply to fix an attendance problem. Okay. I would personally say we go to once a month if we don't have meaningful agenda items and discussion and you know, note uh, twice a month. Okay. Other thoughts? Are I'm a little just... concerned that we might end up with a really heavy load at times. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would bother anyone. But that and that was mentioned at our at our little meeting of just how that might work, mm -hmm. that it might run too late because of having too many things to do at once. Yeah. And that's so I know if I was working full time like some of our people are here. You don't want to be here till 10 o'clock at night or something. <laughs> well, well and, and, and reading <laughs> tons of <laughs> stuff at home. <laughs> the mayor would be falling asleep. I bet that earlier. <laughs> um, but, but reading at home as well, um, all of our items. And yes. I guess I'd be more comfortable doing them twice. Okay. What do you think, Craig? Well, I was Thinking, looking back in my two years, I think we've only had two meetings where we haven't met quorum oh, okay. in that extended time. And so I think we do pretty good overall with what we've had here. Um, and as far as the time of before I came on, the few meetings before I came on, I came and saw that, yeah, they were out and like some of them were in 30 minutes. Uh -huh. But in the last year, I, I don't think we've hardly gotten one out before 45 minutes. And okay. so I, I I think if we try to do everything in once a month, it would be a, a pretty extensive meetings that we'd be having. That I would agree. I've been coming not every meeting, but for the last year or so, year and a half, as many as possible, almost every meeting. And I would say if you switched, looking out, looking in from the outside, uh, if you switched to once a month, I think the load might be too heavy, like Mindy said. Now, if we find that things soften down and we can do that, then maybe we could address that later, like Larry said, but um, there seems to be an awful lot of things that may not be able to go a whole lot of being addressed. Okay, Adam, what do you think? Well, um, I'm pretty flexible, so you'll learn that about me. Okay. Either way works for me. I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever the consent of the council, so if, uh, if it's once a month, I, I'm there. I will make note that um, 
and correct me if I'm wrong, Devin, but this would be setting this for the year, so I'm not sure, you know, the quarterly option. I think this is just, you know, when you set this, this is for the entirety of the, of the so, session. So what it, what it states is, is that every year you'll set, so this will be set for January 1st, yeah. um, or 2021, and it is set, and then if there is a change, Open Meetings Acts, there is a process. Mm -hmm. We would have to publish twice so that we are recognizing and letting the public know that our times um, have changed. Because we used to be always on Tuesdays and then we switched from Thursdays. And that was not a beginning of the year action. That was actually in the middle of the year. So pretty much there, there, when there's a will, there's a way. I do want to, when you, when you all have had your input, I want to add one more thing to the subject. I'm sorry. I think everybody has okay. to go right um, <laughs> The only thing that I wanted to add that if, if there is a consideration of going to one month, um, as department heads, we are doing projects, we're doing contracts, and we have a charter, and we have um, policy for purchases and um, sales and, and all that that we have to follow. When I read it, the charter kind of gets some contradiction, and that charter, I, I think that part that addresses the $500 limit, um, I would be concerned having a once a month without having the attorney finding whether those rules can be, that, that policy that we go by, if it could be addressed by counsel and amended to accommodate a once a month because that might as long as it's in budget parameters already and we are following like we do our 500 rule you know we we work as department heads you get the information but we're still working and getting things forward at our levels that it might be possible but that was my biggest concern and I I I think they can the, the policy and the charter can contradict itself depending who's reading it and what angle you're looking at it. So if you do decide, and I think that's what Sue is applying because I've already shared this with her, that I would want that analyzed and see if that would work to help you guys run business and we're running budget that you've already, for the most part, have approved and know that's going forward. You would still be seeing it, but it would be more on a bill list level, not an approval. I mean, like right now, I have a computer on here because it's over my limit. I can't go forward in that business because it's over my limit. Now, that's something I budgeted and planned that it might happen, but because it's over my limit, it must go for you. And that's where our agenda sometimes can get, you know, quite large on items that it, it's just, it's outdated. And a charter takes a vote of the people. So, again, it says it can follow rules. I think it contradicts itself. So if you choose to go that way, I, I don't have a problem once a month or twice a month, but that would be one subject that I would want addressed and to make things run smoother as, as work for council. Well, that's certainly a valid point. I mean, all of these are valid points. And I just wanted to bring it up for discussion. Um, so I guess it's been discussed, and it sounds to me like we're just going to leave things as they are. But know that in the future, if we see that we're just sitting around here drinking coffee instead of doing business, that maybe we'd only need one. So we can just keep that in mind. Okay. So we'll move on to the mayor's appointments. I'm excited about this part because Adam Grass has agreed to be my mayor pro tem. Thank you so much. So I have him sitting right here so he can tell me stuff. <laughs> and he's doing a great job. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you. Yeah. And I've also appointed the following department heads for the City of Perry, City Clerk Devin Miller, City Treasurer Joanne Belting, Assessor Steve Schweikert, Chief of Police Kyle Box, Superintendent of Public Works John Souder. City Attorney Justin English and Assistant City Attorney, our beloved Thomas Bridges. 
Building Inspector Rob Kehoe, Zoning Administrator Leland Scott, and we just need to hear from you folks if you're all in favor of a motion to approve those. I move that we approve the mayor's appointments of department heads for the city of Perry. Second. Was that correct? It's been moved and seconded that we approve the mayor's appointment of the department heads as read. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now, the next section I'm not ready to do. Sorry. <laughs> I wanted to, I've talked to some people, and you'll see some names in there uh, where they have agreed to um, be reappointed, Jane Delu, James Shaw. Um, but others I've talked to, and I just need a little more time to plug these in. So I've told Devin, go ahead and leave it there so you don't think I'm lollygagging. Um, but I'm, I'm just not ready to present all those names yet. So we will act on that some more next week. Yes. Or not next week. Did you next want to talk week. about the standing committees a little bit? Um, this remind me why I want to do that. So the only person here that might know standing committees is not oh, here. That's right. Yeah. Is Terry Wood. Yeah. We've talked a bit about those because the only standing committee is finance ordinance committee. There's been discussion. We about. have one. Yeah. Yep. So I um, I offered this this option of the work groups by the mayor or the standing committees, and she's interested in considering um, the standing committees that um, were established um, years ago. And I explained to her that um, it's council made up of three council, and it's rotated and it's considered. And I believe that's where you had said that you would like some input from them of their interest in yep. some of these subjects if they should come on the table and to have a meeting before you would pursue this. Yep. And this is in your council rules, but you'll only see the finance and ordinance committee in there. And so as she is getting this um, organized accordingly, they also, the rules, um, council rules and procedures would include these, so there would be an amendment at the next meeting. And I even wrote myself a note, so I apologize. I didn't. That's okay. You're doing, well. yeah. <laughs> You're doing very well. You're doing very well. My note says, Council, please let me know your areas of interest that you would like to be appointed to in these standing committees. <laughs> so just, you don't need to let me know now, but let me know, you can email me, you can call me, you can take me to lunch. How, how many are we to be on, or is it just, just to be on one each, or what's the stipulation? The general, what I've seen in the past is you're usually at, well, you figure there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of them. Eight of them, so you, you'll obviously be, um, a couple that, that will be rotated in there. So there How do the standing committees differ from the work groups? Well, a standing committee, so like the finance and ordinance, if something was, was done, the, the committee is already established. Uh, like parks and property has always been, um, I mean, now it's a work group, but it, it was always committee. It, it didn't come necessarily to council to work on something. Your chairman could actually call a, a, a meeting of the three and work on it and bring a recommendation. So these committees have no power of approval, of course, but it would, um, so personnel policy, you would, instead of the mayor always selecting, hey, would you like to, you like to, you like to do it? The committee is already kind of set up, so if, if you have something that needs more time on it, it could be a quick direction. We're going to send this to the personnel committee. You already know who the chairman is and how you're calling it, and then it's being worked on. So it's really just a group that's already established to address something that might come up in the future, or perhaps there is something ongoing they need to be working on, but rather than determining a work group to address an issue like Devin said it's just a matter of saying well that would go to the parks and properties standing committee 
Any other discussion on that? Did we cover it okay? Are we good there? Yeah. No. Okie doke. The city's depositories. I'm announcing this. The um, following depositories for the city are TFC Bank of Morris and PNC Bank. Looking to the council for approval of that. I move that we approve the mayor's announced depositories for the city of Perry. So moved by Bob, seconded by Craig. Was that Craig? Um, that we approve the announced depositories for the city. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And then we just need to talk a little bit about the check signers for the city. The check signers for the city need to be addressed. So again, council just needs to authorize with this motion. I move that we authorize any two of the following, the mayor, treasurer, or clerk to be signers on all city, on, on city accounts. Second. Okay. And that was moved by Adam, seconded by Craig, that we authorize, as it's listed there, any of the two mayor, treasurer, or clerk to be signers on the city accounts. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So now we come to the paragraph here on mine where we set, actually set the council meeting. So we discussed possibly changing, decided it wasn't a good idea right now, so we just need a motion to set our meetings for the first and third Thursday if that's how we want to proceed. I move for the city's council meetings to be set for the first and third Thursday of each month at 7 p.m. to be held at 203 West Polly Street, Perry. Do we have a second on that? Second. Adam. Moved by Larry, seconded by Adam. For the meetings to be set, as he said, for the first and third Thursday of each month, 7 p.m. right here. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, so that passed and that's the list. Is there any other business that may come before Council Larry? Larry has something. Yes, uh, we've got and we voted on it, uh, or the Council voted on it last time to hold the uh, Citywide Light Parade on uh, December the 10th, uh, which is next Thursday basically at 7 p.m. We called it a light parade. Oh, excuse me. Lighting contest. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get us all in trouble, Larry. <laughs> Great correction. Thank you. Sorry. The citywide lighting contest. <laughs> and I'm looking for, uh, Sue has asked that uh, since I've uh, been in it as a participant in the judging a few years ago, she would asked me to kind of take a lead, which I agreed to. Uh, so I would ask as many council people as possible uh, to attend. Uh, Devin has confirmed that all of last year's winners have agreed to participate in the judging. Uh, so I'd ask that uh, anybody that can and would like to meet here in the parking lot at 645 next Thursday. I'll try to have a little map that kind of helps us uh, navigate through the city uh, fairly quickly in an orderly fashion without hopefully too much backtracking. Uh, and then we'll convene up here once we get back and discuss our, uh, our findings and finalize the uh, first, second, and third place winners for the city for 2020. Okay. Comments, questions? So when we meet here, we'll each be in our own cars. We'll kind of be our own can, little parade going through we'll looking kind of parade at through everything. And follow one another. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, for example, I've got a suburban Linda and I will be there if somebody else wants to ride with us. But I, with the COVID situation, yeah. uh, it may be yeah. that everybody feels more comfortable taking their own vehicles. Right. So. so we should maybe just make notes. Right, make make notes okay. uh, of uh, as best you can. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it can be difficult to read specific house numbers, but I think collectively can describe the house. We can figure out if need be the house okay. numbers uh, right. after the fact, uh, right. and then we'll convene here and go through our discussion process to uh, agree on the uh, the winners for the year. And just a reminder then the intent will be to uh, 
uh, have that finalized, communicated, and invite those folks to our next uh, council meeting for actual presentation. Sounds good. Sounds great. Anybody have any questions for Larry? Sue, I forgot to tell you about this part, though. Okay. Under any other business, is our second time for public comment to, to oh, speak. Okay. And I did add that note. I think our only public person, other than our camera lady. Oh, ask online. You want to do that? Yes. Is there anybody on Zoom that wishes to speak? Please hold up their hand. I do not see anybody asking to speak. So there's no one on Zoom who is asking to speak. Is there anyone else here, public? Uh, person who would like to speak at this time? Any other business that needs to come to the council? Any discussions or observations anybody wants to share? I'll just say that I've been here to the city now two days and I'm having a great time. <laughs> Maybe too much fun, but uh, the staff is wonderful to work with. They've been very, very helpful, and uh, they're very supportive. And um, I heard them say many times before I came on as mayor that they're like a family, and um, they really are like a family. So that's nice. Thank you. I congratulate Councilman for making it through your, your first one. And again, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you guys are here. We look forward to working with all of you. And uh, yeah. we're looking forward to this legislative or yeah. session here that we have. Great. I'm looking forward to working with all of you, the newbies and the experienced people. If there's nothing else to come before Council, this meeting's adjourned.